Hi, I'm Jay from Real Street Performance. Today I'm going to be assembling the D-Stroker K24 for the TRC RSX. I've got a Darden sleeved K24 block. I've got a BC 92 millimeter crank, a BC H beam rod, and a JE Ultra piston. As I put the engine together, I'll discuss why I chose these parts and why I feel that it's one of the best configurations for a power adder K series. I've got the Bryant Power crankshaft on the bench next to this factory K20 crankshaft. Now the stroke is the first thing you guys can talk about. You have a 92 millimeter stroke versus an 86 millimeter stroke in the K20 and a 99 millimeter stroke in the K24, which is gonna give it a displacement right under 2.2 liters. I think it's 2187 cc's. Now a D-Stroker K24, again, it's not a very new process. The guys that are into the engine math have been doing this for some time, and they were doing it with the use of a Honda F20C crankshaft. Now, as the F20C engines have kind of dried up and the parts have gone up and up in price, it's cheaper and more accessible to get a aftermarket crankshaft. Now the aftermarket crankshaft has a few other notable differences. The factory crankshaft has a cross-drilled journal. The Brian Carower crankshaft has direct oiling. Now the theories behind direct oiling is at very high RPM, the centrifugal force can trap the oil in the crankshaft and starve the journals. So most aftermarket performance crankshafts are gonna be direct oiling. The rod bearing on the K series is just over 15 millimeters wide. Whereas this crank using a B series journal is over 19 millimeters wide. So you have a wider footprint of bearing that's gonna help spread the load out as the engine speed increases and the cylinder pressure increases. Basically the diameter of the crankshaft journal is the distance the oil has to travel before it's replenished. So you want a wide footprint that's not very big around. So when you look at the K series rod bearing compared to the F series or B series rod bearing, you're dealing with a four millimeter wider bearing to spread that load out as you increase boost, engine stress, engine RPM. It's just gonna be a better living rod bearing. And the F series rod bearing and the B series rod bearing are very similar in widths, although a different diameter. So for those of you that haven't seen the inside of a K-Series before, one of the advantages would be this is a bed plate. So the main caps and the girdle, the bottom of the block, it's all one piece. It's really a neat uh, way to do things. And a lot of the late model engines are bed plate design. It just makes for a stronger engine, uh, more difficult to machine. So when you deal with like a line honing a bed plate engine, you have to very precisely make either the bed plate or the block a little bit shorter to be able to go back in and align hone the mains. Whereas a standard engine that has just standalone main caps, you could cut those caps individually. So it's a little bit less intense to do a line honing on a standard main cap engine, but the bed plate design and the way that it manages uh, the harmonics and the way that it ties the bottom of the engine together, uh, far more integrity in a bed plate block than just a standard standalone cap. So another difference on the K-Series compared to the earlier Honda engines, or some of the earlier Honda engines, is it is using a torque angle main bolt. So you'll go to a 22 foot pounds 
and then they want you to rotate each fastener 56 degrees. It's important to uh, keep track of where you are because with a regular bolt, you could go back and put the torque wrench on it and check it. With these, you're just gonna go through the steps and call it good. So um, if you're easily interrupted, make sure that you've kind of like turned your phone off, turn your interruptions off and just focus on this. Or you can go and as you do the torque angle on each fastener, just take a Sharpie and write on that bolt. But you don't wanna lose track because you'll have to start over. It means loosening all the fasteners and then torquing them to 22 again and then bringing them up to the angle. So when you think about the stroke of the crankshaft, the stroke of the crankshaft is the distance the piston travels up and down the bore. There are different engine configurations that have a kind of a different desirable stroke. So if you look at like a very extreme side of the spectrum would be uh, modern sport bike engines. They have a very low stroke, the biggest bore they can fit, and they turn a lot of RPM, you know, 16, 17,000 RPM. Formula One was a similar thing when it was aspirated. You had very low stroke engines that had as big of a bore as they could fit, you know, in the configuration, and they would turn a lot of RPM. Now, the downside to stroke is it comes with a certain amount of aggression. It's internal leverage. The further that rod lays over as it pushes the piston back up the bore, the more internal friction the engine sees. So there are cases that you'd have an undesirable stroke for the RPM or the power band. Well, the Honda engine's no different than any other piston engine. And if you look at what Honda did with the F20C, which is arguably one of the highest output engines per cubic inch that Honda ever built, you're dealing with a um, long connecting rod, a relatively short stroke, and a bore that is big enough to fit the valve area that you need to make the horsepower. So a lot of the bore stuff is determined by valve area, but that's a whole different kind of sidebar conversation. And right now we're just discussing stroke. So what we wanted to do is have the tall deck of the K24 block with a stroke much more similar to say an S2000 because from the factory, those engines were very high RPM engines. So we landed on a 92 millimeter stroke the tall deck of the K24, and we have around 165 rod stroke ratio. And with a turbocharged engine, it's much easier for me to raise the boost and make more pressure than it is for me to put more internal leverage in the engine that can cause problems. So if you look at certain communities like the GTR R35 community, when those cars first came out, a lot of them were putting the biggest engine displacement configuration that they could in those cars to make power. However, they had problems with the crankshafts cracking because of that internal leverage. So as that community matured, they moved back towards lower stroke values because it took some of that leverage away and kept the crankshafts alive longer. So same thing we're doing here. We're gonna have an engine that can make, you know, 800, 900 horsepower and, and live well. And we're gonna do that by alleviating some of that internal friction, letting the turbocharger do the work.
As I mentioned before, this is a Darden sleeve block. So in a previous video, you saw Mark Mazarowski from Mazworks go through all of the steps it takes to get the sleeves properly installed in the block. But basically an aftermarket sleeve is gonna leave you with a stronger cylinder. So it's gonna distort less under pressure, keeping the rings sealed. And it's gonna be stronger and avoid cracking in the cylinder. So sleeving is a very invasive procedure. You don't wanna do it with someone that isn't familiar with doing that type of work. But if you have an engine block that's prone to losing shape, so it just starts pumping a lot of blow by at a certain power level or cracking a cylinder at a certain power level, you'll look into sleeping. For those of you that noticed the color of these studs versus the regular ARP black hardware or the 625 hardware, which has a silver color, this is an L19 material. And while it's uh, a strong material, it does not do well with moisture or water. So you would never use an L19 stud on an engine that the stud goes into a water jacket. And if you do, clean them with anything or if your hands are wet you want to get the water off the stud it actually causes uh, hydrogen embrittlement which as crazy as it sounds the fastener will just quickly deteriorate and or break so if you're working with l19 material like this speed factory kit you want to be careful with how you handle it you won't you won't be able to get away with handling it like the rest of the hardware that's on, on the engine Cylinder head consists of drag cartel 3.2 cams, SuperTech valves, SuperTech valve springs, and Mazworks did all the machine work on it. Pretty nice built head, nothing crazy, but does have a lot of camshaft in it. So as long as we can get enough turbine flow, we'll have a pretty high RPM engine. The engine will start off with the same 6466 that's on it now. The way that things go with Javier and his guys, it's likely to end up with a larger turbo as things go.
I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Pretty cool engine. I really like the parts that are in it and I'm hopeful to see it make quite a bit of power and have a nice life.